doing what to the nipple? <laughs> anyway, my name is Funk Master V. This is uh, Big Luke Walker. It took me a second there. So here we go again with another great American wrestling uh, episode. This is episode seven. It starts off with this Mark Green. Uh, like, it's a strange thing. And when I'm looking at it, I'm like, why did I do this? But it's like Mark Green on a static screen with static. Uh, like giving us some sort of transmission about what the show's about, but it has to come down to the fact that this month something had to be jacked up with the audio where they were probably standing like a regular wrestling show where you have a mic and Shay was probably with them, and I probably had to call him and, and say the audio it, was jacked up and you have to redo this. Re-record it over Skype is yeah, probably what happened. It's exactly what happened this month. I remember it uh, vividly. So... Yeah, Young Bloods and DRI. Well, now the Young Bloods are somebody that uh, Barry Allen with Ego Pro was, you know, he's always been real high on them, and we were too. I mean, uh, so those guys are some freaking athletes, man. And we wanted to give them exposure. See, what one of the things we got grief with from uh, other wrestlers was, why don't you use this guy? Why don't you use this guy? Why don't you use this guy? It's like because we thought we were going to be in charge of this for years. And we didn't want to. That's right. We didn't want to use everybody all we at once. We didn't want to burn through the talent. Yeah. And so we're also making a TV show too. Yeah. So like, you have one big man. We had way too many big men. Yeah. Uh, so we couldn't bring on other big men. We needed people with bodies. We needed girls, but we needed people that look good on TV. Just because you're a good wrestler doesn't mean you're a good television wrestler. And again, we'll go back, and we haven't even said this really. Troy really liked Memphis wrestling, so this was a transformation from the weird entity that Great American was, which was just a bland look at our super athletic matches, and this was a morphing into Memphis, and he well, was kind of combining it with his love of comic books before, too. And before, there was no stories to yes. Great American wrestling, and we are, you're going to put us in charge, me, you, and Jason Max are all storytellers. Right. You want to put the three of us in charge of... A, a wrestling promotion we're going to make everything matter make everything count like we wanted to death row inmates even though jason max was you know one of the bookers but he was also part of the death row inmates we wanted death row inmates to look like unstoppable uh, you know we wanted it to look like a legit thing like they were really were just released from prison to come here and beat well, the crap out of people for fun well that's what the death row inmates gimmick and, always was so. and I, we thought the perfect because you know these these amazing athletes in uh not young, young in boys? the young bloods yeah we thought that was going to be a you know a great you know, i wanted to say street dreams uh would be a great feud now uh then we get into uh, I have a match with uh, Tim Smiley, and th this match was, people, some people didn't understand it, because I, I tend to go real deep, and it was uh, Allstate Insurance, was it, was the sponsor? State Farm. State Farm Insurance, yeah. but the, the, the agent's name was Steve Irwin, and so I was like, you know, like, I'm an idiot. So I said the guy's name is Steve Irwin, so I dressed like the crocodile hunter instead of State Farm Insurance. Um, because his name was Steve Irwin, which was ridiculous. But was Steve Irwin dead at this point? Yeah. Oh. Shit. But uh, Tim Smiley is somebody that we never met until Great American Wrestling, and we didn't know him. We didn't think nothing of him. He's just a you know a good looking kid backstage, and eh, he's a pretty good looking kid. Eh. But he he came out of the curtain for the first time, and smiled at the crowd and did a little pose, and the crowd flipped. They were like. Immediately loved the guy. So, and then we immediately loved the guy. So we're like, this this guy is going to be somebody that we want to, because you know we wanted to build with the guys I'm kind of beating up on in these you know gimmick matches are all you know are all guys we wanted you know Christian Lotus, Austin Knight, uh, Dante HP. These are all guys that we wanted to get a cruiserweight go a love thing going, and really put them over. Never got the time to do it. Now you uh, uh, wrestle against one of High Risk Impact, and it's pretty pretty entertaining match. And your valet got involved in it and did that. Well, it's what, a story. I mean, we, yeah. we I apparently on one of the first four episodes they're a loss. Now I uh, bitched out uh, Austin Knight. I pissed off Debbie Danger because I was flirting too hard with ne Nina Monet and the mother. Which ship. is understandable. Well, they're both hot, and then oh. the, uh, Debbie did a great job of being pissy at me in this match and cost me the match. Spoiler alert. But a really good match with uh, Austin and, and them guys were so good and stuff. 
And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, like, uh, also in this, uh, we have a menace match uh, that didn't last 45 minutes. He obeyed the time limit, and he took <laughs> on uh, uh, Eric Andrews, who was our champion. I have no idea who that guy is, but uh, Troy booked him from somewhere in the from Midwest. From Nashville, I think. I think he was from Indiana or something. I don't yeah. know. But, anyway, he was a... Uh, he was a guy on camera. He at least looked like a, a yeah. wrestler, and everybody knows Menace is athletic. Oh, Men Menace is, you know, if you were to tell me who's your man ass, I kept I kept goofing around and calling him man ass. Um, but if you were to ask me who was the best wrestler in, a, a, ever in Tennessee, the answer is Menace. What? Yeah. Like Jerry Lawler? No, I'm talking about actual wrestler. You talking you about? Know, well, what's uh, funny Menace, about Menace put on a match with Ricochet? about three or four years ago that would put anything on TV that Ricochet has done or these other flippy doopy doo guys have done, <laughs> put it just put it to shame. Uh, Menace and, and Ricochet for KFW, literally uh, everybody in the back, people were, were, were you know, we, usually we hide to watch the match. Instead, we're all, everybody's we just... hide and watch the match. You know, hide. hide oh, hide. And watch okay. the match. We, literally, everybody's just standing in the arena like this. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he's so What's good. What's funny, though, is around the nation, in the region, he's not liked because they think they ripped... If you go anywhere else and you ask about Menace, he's known, yeah. but they all think he ripped his, uh, the gimmick off of Hayabusa, which he didn't, because I think Menace based that on, what, Scorpion out of uh, Mortal Kombat, yeah. right? Yeah, well, and even if he did, it's, it's not a rip-off. It's, 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 a, it's a full tribute. I mean, you don't go around going like Lou Vudo is an Elvis rip-off. No, he's a, he's, it's, tr it's a tribute. You know, that the Asian <laughs> kid singing for Steve Perry isn't, you know, a rip-off of Steve Perry. It's a tribute to Steve Perry. Lou Vudo might be a rip-off. No, nah, man, Lou Vudo is the best. If you want to see Lou Voodoo, you can watch our movie The Hike. If you want to see Smiley, you can watch our movie Camp Smokey. Yeah. If you want to see Rock C, you can watch our movie WJHCAM. And, and, and if you want to watch really good wrestling, watch this coming up. Hey, it's a really good episode. A real great, real great wrestling in this, except for me, who uh, uh, botched a move where I stuck my head up Smiley's ass for about 30 seconds. Cause... Thank you for bringing that yeah. up, because that was absolutely terrible. And I want you guys to watch that. In fact, there is a. I think we did a rewind episode where I just showed that well, over and over where you were sticking your head at up. This, in, at this in, time, in. I was about thirty-nine years old, and I. This was about this. Maybe this might be the moment. You might see the moment where I started realizing that I might be getting too old, because <laughs> I used to be able to just take a guy and stand up, and no problem. This time, I get under the guy and try to stand up, and I can't. This and I'm was like, a, oh, this I'm was old. a this was a pure cranium colonoscopy. Enjoy it. Wrestling fans, do not miss out on the opportunity to take part in a live television taping of Great American Wrestling, November 6th, located at the Fountainhead College of Technology at 3203 Tazewell Pike in Fountain City. The doors open at 7. The action starts at 8 p.m. Be there. Good afternoon, wrestling fans. This is Mark Green here, happy to serve up another helping of great American wrestling. Today is the day we've all been waiting for. The new champ, Eric Andrews, defends his title for the first time tonight. And what a challenge that will be, because tonight he faces the number one contender, Menace. Also on the show, Menace's friends, the Youngbloods, tangle with the fearsome death row inmates. Let's hear what the Youngbloods had to say about their opportunity here at Great American Wrestling. It's Mark Green, and I'm here with the Young Bloods. What brings you guys to Great American Wrestling? What well, a Black and Easy Assassin, the Hard Master, had told us this is where the action goes down. 
and we looking for the action. What Spoonie Mac's trying to say is Octavius Black, Spoonie Mac, we make up the Young Bloods. Yes, we are the hottest team in all of the Southeast, and we are here at Great American Wrestling to shake stuff up. And I promise you this, once we get here, it will never be the same. Yeah. <laughs> what are we looking for, Leroy Green? While the while DRI is assuming the position, check at it down. All right, referee Drew Flanagan, bringing the bell to start. Here we go, the crowd's getting vocal already. Jagger Sterling's over there trying to incite the fans to chant DRI. Big O and Rat Caps Lock. These are two big boys. That's something if you want to see big athletes competing at a high level, my goodness, what a job. Then Big O's taking it right to, to Brad Cash. Right to it. No fear, no and intimidation. Here comes Spooty Mac off the top. You know, Spooty Mac, I've seen him action a number of times. He is a real high flying guy, these guys. Again, like you said, classic tag team strategy. Fresh man, keep him in the corner. Cut, keep him on your side of the ring. So glad you started to pay attention. You know, uh, it's osmosis. I'm just soaking it up, sitting here, basking in your knowledge. Right here on Fox 1.3, Mason Dixon. Another tag. Here comes Spoonie off the ropes. What's he going to do here? Oh, that's the set time right there on Brad Cash. From one, two, kick out from Brad Cash. DRI doesn't look too worried about that. Jason Max coaching up his teammate. Selling. Oh my good lord. Did you see the smile on Brad Cash's face? What? What a demented freak. Why would anyone enjoy and smile after being kicked in the chest like that by Big O? I'd be in a hospital, Mason Dixon. You'd be in the hospital from a paper cut. Well, that's. You've got great insurance. I bet you got allergies too, don't you? Lots. Name it, I'm allergic to it, brother. I wish I was allergic to DRI so they would leave me alone. Apparently, good commentaries on that list, too. Here we go with the double team. Big O with the big smash up right catch. Here comes Sterling. Oh. Rocket right into the head in the corner. Jagger Sterling having a connection. Tell if that hit the chin or the chest of Jason Knox, but both DRI are out of the jacket and he's losing his mind. Oh, Spoonie's getting choked out by Brad over there. I do not end this one. Oh, my goodness. Big elbow by Brad Cash. Set him flying back. Oh! oh. Quick oh, play, yeah. come back. Jason Max driving by the hair. Always be aware of your surroundings and what corner you're in in a tag team match. Absolutely. Big O coming in. Referee Flanagan pushing it back. Loving. Brad Cash just drilled Spoonie Mac. Jagger Sterling just took a cheap shot at Spoonie Mac. I saw it, you saw it, and all the fans out there at Great American Wrestling saw it. Something has to be done about Jagger Sterling and DRI. They are absolutely out of control around here. Why? Because they win? Not because they don't they haven't won a match honestly the entire time they've been here. They've cheated. Look at Jagger Sterling right now. He's choking Spoonie back on the roots. I'm sorry, I got glare from the lights. Oh my goodness. I hope Jagger Sterling's proud of himself over there. Now, he doesn't look disappointed. See, he, he slipped. It was an accident. He had new shoes. New shoes. Look at the elevation. Mac, 
Max just taking his time with Spoonie Mac here. Jason Max, a ring veteran, he really knows what he's doing in there. Here they go trying to get the crowd behind him. Jason Max took his head off and blew out of the ring on that. Spoonie is hurt. That should be at one, two. Two count Kicked from referee from Flanagan. As Bob Ross would say, two hairs and some air. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Absolutely. Ross reference right here on Great American Wrestling. Jason Max just pointed at Big O and taunted him. Oh goodness. That looked like an ace crusher. Oh, what's going on? Jagger Sterling's just walking out. No, sit down. Jagger Sterling. Jagger Sterling, welcome to our office, sir. What do I want? What don't I want? The world is ours. If you have not been watching Great American Wrestling, shame on you because you have seen week after week the most dominant and feared tag team in wrestling today, the death of women. Let me tell you, when I signed these men, these monsters, okay, I asked for the best of the best. I wanted high profile matches live this morning, Saturday morning, they give us the young blood. You want young blood? Watch this match, Marjorie. Watch it, because you're going to see the young blood spill all over that canvas. Pour some sugar on that. Jagger Sterling, you, what do you have to say for yourself? We saw you choking Spoonie Mac over there. Now you're guys really ready to Spoonie Mac, the guy that choked the Jason Max is got in the ring right now. We saw you choking him over there on those ropes. You had a shoe malfunction, didn't you? What? You had a shoe malfunction, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Listen to your partner. He knows. That's not right. They're going to win this match. We're going to get the winners first. I'm going to get some new shoes. It'll never happen again. You're going to get some new shoes, and then next time you slip, I'm sure you'll say it's because it's those new shoes you have. I'm going to get some new shoes, Mike Green, and I'm going to walk. It's not Mike, it's Mark. <laughs> of course. Whatever, kid. Marky, Mark, you're going to be called whatever we call you. <laughs> All right. All right, Jack. So let's get back to the action here. It looks like somebody back. Oh, never mind. Did Brad Cash Brad just, Cash just fed him a knuckle sandwich? Absolutely. 24 7, hot and fresh, That's right? right. And that's just one fist. He's got another one. And if you get soft, yeah, but he talks to it. Time, Mitchell Green, he's going to come over here. It's not Mitchell, it's Mark. Whatever. Seriously, who's keeping up with your name? You are apparently because you're always over here talking to me. And why did you call me last week during your boxes, man? I am out there with the death row in me, spinning up to victory. And you're over here so nonchalant, I'm not even paying attention. I'm here to tell you how to do your job. Because you're doing all you better go do your job and make sure your best job. I felt that insecurity with the Spoonie Mac. I don't have to do anything to got this. John Cash is on the right end of town. Look, he's going to make that tag. He's going to make some Spoonie Mac's making his way on the big O. You don't want a hot and mad home. Oh, that's Cash makes tag. Big O, brother. After the death row inmates dismantle the young bloods. Man, I don't know. Man, I'm trying to think. Oh, what about that super kick? That double super kick? Yeah, because they cheated. It's been going on this whole match. Yeah, you're right. You guys have been doing it the whole time. 
Here we go. Brad, Brad Cash Dragon, big O to the outside. I say, that's discrimination. You know, I said, we're great Americans. Everyone's like, oh, y'all, a bunch of convicts. No, we're simply reflections of you. You're all convicts. You all just lie about it. We don't pretend. I'd hate to see the person that Brad, that Brad Cash is a reflection of. Big O, Brad Cash throwing hands on the outside. There's some hand throwing right there. Oh my goodness, two big Macedons just smacking the crap out of each other. We're gonna split him back up the top. Jason Max, oh, kick him back into the corner. What's going on, everybody? Watch out! Watch out, folks! Oh my God! Everybody, watch out! We've got chaos and pandemonium all over the place. Brad Cash. It looks like he and Big O just brawled into the back, and now it's left Spunny Mac alone out here against Jason Max, Roxy, and Jagger Sterling. That's you it. call that a tarantula DDT? I call that. I call that. A, I call that the end of the match. What a great physical match between the two. Of them. Once again, the Death Row mates have come out here and cheated their way to victory. Uncle Slam really needs to look into this and see what's going on. And I know referee Drew Flanagan's got his hands full out there with all those guys, but something's got to be done. Last week on Great American Wrestling. I have the lovely Nina Monet in his... On the mothership of Funkmaster V, Funkmaster's incessant flirting with the lovely Nina Monet seemed to cause rift between Funky and Debbie Danger. In fact, his incessant flirting was too much even for Nina Monet herself, as she would later show that she was not having it. <laughs> oh! Is this going to affect his match tonight? Tune in and we'll find out. And here we are on Great American Wrestling. It's me, Mark Green, and here he is, the funkiest man on the planet, Toot Toot. It's Funk Master V, and look, he's accompanied by the lovely Debbie Danger. Now, after uh, after their little uh, spat on the mothership last week, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure that we were going to see Debbie Danger out here with Funk Master. Here he is walking up to the ring. He's taking on Austin Knight on on uh, this week's episode here. Austin Knight, who's one half of High Risk Impact, uh, as many of you fans out there of Great American Wrestling know, Austin Knight was on the uh, mothership with Funkmaster V. He really felt disrespected and uh, picked on by, uh, it's sort of a country mouse, city mouse type of uh, deal because, you know, Funkmaster, he's a slick-talking, he's a slick-talking guy from the big city, and, you know, Austin Knight, he's just a good old country boy. And look, here he is. Now he's ready to ride the funk train to toot. Funkmaster, not to be outdone, says, no, son, this is how it's done. But Austin Knight has asked for this match with Funkmaster after he felt he was disrespected and even bullied, you might say, on uh, the mothership with Funkmaster V. And Funkmaster, unbeknownst to some of you fans out there, and here he goes with the preen in the showboating again. You know, this guy gets in the ring. He thinks he needs to show off. He took a step and didn't fall down. He thinks he needs to show off. Give me a break. But Funkmaster uh, has a clause in his contract uh, for the mothership, that a uh, no physicality clause, wherein if a talent touches Funkmaster V during one of these segments, they can be fined, suspended, or even fired if the uh, offense is serious enough. And Austin Knight, uh, being a good guy, he wants to keep that job, um, and he wants to come out here and continue to be a positive role model uh, for, for our younger fans. 
So he asked for his match and was granted this match here with Funkmaster V. And here we go with another collar and elbow tie up here. Funkmaster V wearing some of those funky tights. Looks like a funky chicken with a big slam there to Austin Knight. And here he goes, strutting around like he's Funkmaster Fargo out there, fixing his hair. Austin Knight, one half a high risk. You can see his partner back down there in the back, uh, Dante HP. Uh, these guys are really young, exciting, up-and-coming tag team. Uh, they're really starting to get a lot of success here in the uh, southeastern region, especially around the East Tennessee area, uh, starting to compete for some tag titles, even winning a few. And, uh, you know, it's unusual to see Austin here with a big slam right there to the Funkmaster V. It's unusual to see him in singles action, but, uh, you know, he felt disrespected. And the kid, he's a man. He's, he's learning how to be a man. He's going to stand up. He's not going to be disrespected. Uh, especially about the likes of Funkmaster V. So he's going to come up and stand up to bullies and, uh, you know, stand up for himself. Don't forget our next TV tapings will be November 6th at 8 p.m. right here at the Fountainhead College of Technology on Taswell Pike in Knoxville. And as you see Debbie Danger covering up uh, Funkmaster with that gorgeous mink coat. And what's Dante HP doing? And what's Debbie Danger doing letting him just walk around? Dante's uh, helping. What? He just shoved Funky back in the ring and took that mink. Funky doesn't know what's going on. Oh, Austin Knight with the roll-up. One, two. Kick out there. Savvy move there by Austin Knight. Way to take advantage of a situation. You know, Funkmaster would certainly do that. And here's Austin Knight. Now he's going to show everybody that he knows how to drive that funk train. Funkmaster V. Suffering a little lower back pain at the moment. Here we go with another time. Now, Funkmaster V... Uh, for all of his shenanigans that he tries to pull here at Great American Wrestling, one thing that sometimes gets overlooked is how crafty uh, of a performer and a, a, as a wrestler that he is, as an athlete. Uh, he's been around the business for a while. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's definitely the more experienced. He's definitely got the experience edge here in this match with Austin Knight. Austin might have a little size on him, but uh, that experience from Funky has to uh, has to play into this match. Funkmaster, they're being checked on by a referee. No Nick Flanagan. Telling him, come on. He's, looks, appears to have injured his left arm. Oh, what a knee to the gut there. Austin Knight wasn't expecting that. Got a wrist lock there. Funkmaster just talking to him the whole time. Austin, nice little cart. Nice little counter there, and he's got it applied to Funkmaster. Working that wrist right there. Trying to force him into submission. Funkmaster, though, the thinking man's champion. He's going to roll through, and Austin Knight rolls through with him. I don't think Funky was expecting that one. We go here. He's got moving up on the arm lock there. Grabbing a hold of the shoulder. Funkmaster thinks he's outsmart. Oh, <laughs> once again, Austin Knight. Funkmaster just about had him outsmarted. Now he's going to be forced to break the hold. Uh, he's in the ropes there. Uh, which, of course, you know, in Great American Wrestling, is definitely uh, you're breaking the hold at that point. Uh, Funky outsmarted him getting the old uh, shoulder toss in, but uh, Austin Knight rolled with him. He was ready for it. This is an interesting little matchup here between uh, two very game competitors this evening. Funky with the big knee to the gut again. Throws him off the ropes. Oh, the funky one it was just a little too spunky, a little too smart for us tonight on that one. Big knee to the face there. Now he's got to go up there and talk to the ref. He should be pinning, covering the guy. Going for the pin attempt. He's out here showing off. Is he grabbing his eyes? Flanagan, you better check that. He might be grabbing his eyes. Young Austin Knight laying prone on the ropes. Debbie Danger looks on. The lovely Debbie Danger. It's interesting to see, uh, you know, she had quite the dust up with Funky last week on the mothership. It's interesting to see her out here uh, supporting the Funk, although she did kind of look the other way when Austin Knight, or uh, when Dante came around. Funky hitting it with a real funky right hand there. What's he going for here? A big suplex, maybe? And there he goes, Funk Master with a nice suplex. Toot, toot. That's the funkiest suplex you'll ever see. Crawling over for the pin. One, two, Austin Knight with a kick out. He's got to know that a, a suplex is not going to pin a young, hungry, athletic competitor like Austin Knight. 
But, uh, you know, as we talked about with him last week, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to go for it and just get him in that mindset of they're on, they're on defense, not on offense. Funkmaster again outsmarting him. And again with the eye rake. Flannan's going to have to do something about that. Also, just want to let you fans out there know that uh, this match is brought to you by Funkmaster V's own Uptown Cabs are renowned. Don't drive drunk. Ride with the funk. It looks like, uh, what could Punk Master be going for here? He might be going for the figure four, but nope. Looks like he might be. Surely not. He's going to go up top. He's going to take the Funk train up top. He says that's it. It's over. Oh, he misses the flying knee. No, nobody home there for that. Austin not using that speed. That's definitely an area he's got an advantage on, uh, Funk Master being a speed. And look at Austin Knight here. He's going to disrespect Funky the way Funky disrespected him. He's going to put his own hold on him. The figure four, woo, right here in the middle of the ring on Great American Wrestling. Funkmaster's got to know all the counters to this. He knows he's got to roll it. But Austin Knight's got that locked in. He's got the he's got the position. He's got the size on him. Funky reaching, reaching, barely grab those ropes. What's going on with Dante and Debbie Danger out here? They're comparing uh, jackets, vests. Now she's checking out his arms while they're big kick to the gut there. Funkmaster seems to be a little distracted by this just like I am. Uh, she's just kind of giving him a rub down or just checking out those arms. I'm not sure what what's going on. Dante HP waving him off saying, you know, you got a match to worry about, pal. You should be doing that. Big kick to the stomach there from Austin Knight. And it looks like he's going to go for a backslide attempt here while Debbie Danger and Dante HP are just flirting on the outside. Three, that's it. That's it. The three count from our referee Flanagan and Austin Knight has come in and stolen one from the Funkmaster. That should teach Funkmaster to respect Austin Knight and to respect all his guests on the mothership of Funkmaster V. She got my main back. She just came. <laughs> some great insurance from State Farm Agent Steve Irwin. Let me get this correct. This week, Big Luke is going by Big Luke Steve Irwin Sr. State Farm. Mason Dixon. Even you have to think that's just a tiny bit ridiculous. Hey, look, Big Luke's in here with the show of sportsmanship, trying to shake the young man's hand. Um, for Tim Smiley's sake, yeah, let's I hope it. health insurance is covered as well. Yes. Big Luke, Steve Irwin, State Farm. That's you said a mouthful, brother. His business associate, Paul Buchanan, out there reminding us what the phone number was. <laughs> Norman Smiley has got a tall task ahead of him today, Mason Dixon. Are we, we watching the same match? Tim Smiley. Tim Smiley's got a tall task in front of him. Hanging on a man's oh, side. here goes there Big Luke. Oh, Whoa. Smiley lands on his feet. Oh, no time he landed on his head. He just ran into Big Luke's foot. Oh, poor Smiley. Big Luke not even bothering to take off his uh, his entrance gear. No. Well, Tim Smiley just knocked his hat off there, but, you know, that, that might be the only thing that happens to Big Luke. Big Luke, Steve Irwin, State Farm. He's selling. Move a couple stops there. Big Luke, Steve Irwin, Steve Bond, 
he's getting on his knees to fight Tim Sloan. Well, whatever works. I don't know if this is such a great idea for Big Luke. Tim Smiley's a quick guy. When he gets to be the same size, ooh, that couldn't have felt good. Huh? Big Luke running off the ropes. That's a big run. leg. That might be it for Tim Smiley. The big leg from Big Luke, Steve Irwin, State Farm. Yeah. At Fountainhead Commons, brought to you by Fountainhead College of Technology. Is that enough plugs in one statement? No, we also forgot. On to Fox 43. Fox we also forgot to plug Funkmaster Beast Uptown, Uptown Cabs of Renown. Don't drive drunk, ride with the funk. Now I think that's my plugs. Two. Three. That's it. Big Luke State, Steve Irwin State Farm with the win. Showed a little mercy, even in mercifully short here against Tim Smiley. Now see if Big Luke was smart, he'd stick one of those flyers in uh, Tim Smiley's tights. Say, give us a call, buddy. He could definitely use that health insurance after that. He got, what's Big Luke doing? Oh, Big Luke, what a nice guy. He's just going to carry him to the back. Wrestling fans, do not miss out on the opportunity to take part in a live television taping of Great American Wrestling November 6th, located at the Fountainhead College of Technology at 3203 Tassel Pike in Fountain City. The doors open at 7. The action starts at 8 p.m. Be there. And now the time that you've been waiting for is finally here, fans. He's here, your first great American wrestling champion, the Dragon, Eric Andrews. Eric Andrews, the first great American champion, and this is his first title defense. We'll be joined shortly here by the one and only Funkmaster V. Here he comes, menace, framing for the crowd, and there he is. Hello there, Funkmaster. <laughs> Welcome to the broadcast table. It's a pleasure to see you as always. Well, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, confused by a lot of different things, but we'll we'll focus on. Uh, I, I really can't get over the fact that I just got uh, pinned by uh, Austin Knight. What uh, uh, what happened on that? What's the deal with you I, and Debbie Danger there, Funk Master? Man, let me just tell you, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Woo! Because I'll tell you something. Like a Debbie Danger scorn. Like a Debbie Danger. Because I'll. She's oh little, look, hey. Enough talk of Debbie Danger. And we'll, uh -oh. we'll, we'll certainly talk more about that. It looks like these guys are ready to, to get it on here in our first Great American Wrestling Championship match. Right here on Great American Wrestling. Mark Green with Funk Master V and these guys. Oh, I thought they were going to lock. Mm -hmm. Eric Andrews. Eric Andrews, the champ. He's the um, He won the Battle Royal. He eliminated me from the Battle Royal. Kind of hurt. And you would have won it if he hadn't eliminated you, right? <laughs> Uh, I would have had a better, mathematically speaking, I would have had a better chance to win if I was not eliminated by him at that point. So, yes. But he, uh, you know, this guy, Eric Andrews, uh, even though he doesn't know how to spell the word Eric, he doesn't know how to spell his name, uh, he's a fantastic wrestler, big guy. You know, and he's... He's, he's uh, apparently fancies himself quite the comedian as well. He's over there uh, mocking Menace. Minutes well, using those claps to get the crowd behind him. It's uh, he's a very popular performer here. Um, everybody you know, loves Menace. I mean, you got to respect Menace. Menace has been around a long time. Like we were talking earlier, you know, you saw this guy when you're in high school, and you're about to I apply, did. You're about to apply for disability or uh, uh, social security. You're hilarious. <laughs> you're hilarious, but, Dad. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm older than you, but still, I look good, and so does Menace. And uh, you know, he's been doing Eric this a Andrews. long time. Not looking so good right now. Menace coming out, taking the early advantage in this match. I don't know if Eric Andrews is really prepared to face Menace. Menace is prepared for this match a lot. He is uh, trained for this. 
he's no stranger to title matches and title defenses as uh, he's been in that situation plenty of times himself. That's the strength here. We're going to see. I think Eric may be a little stronger, but I don't know. He, uh, he's, got know a, he's, got, he's got a lower center of gravity, uh, which helps you on these. He's a little broader yeah. than uh, Menace, and, uh, you know, he's – but, you can uh, tell he spent some time working on his arms, but Menace, you know, don't uh, don't let the smooth taste fool you. He's wily, he's crafty, and uh, he's a strong guy. There he goes. Andrew, now he's working him down. Andrews, though, being the smart wrestler he is, knows to find that rope so that he's forced to break, so Menace is forced to break the hold. Yeah, well, that's a good way to keep your arm from snapping in half. And I do appreciate the fact that uh, Mason Dixon manages this guy gives me a little bit more air time with you oh yeah thanks mason you know i thought i'd be thrilled just to not have mason dixon sitting next to me for this important <laughs> title match because i thought he'd just be insufferable well you as it usually is but it looks i mean if there was only if there was one choice that could have been worse uh it would have oh, been death no, row listen, it I... would have been death row oh, okay, one choice you. better would have been you oh well hey you know what you smell right now lavender you don't get that with Mason Dixon. And we've got That's what Eric. that funk is? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just normal funk. Speaking of funk, Eric Andrews is uh, beating the funk out of Menace right now. Those big right hands in the corner. And here's another Those form. Are forearms. Well. But, you, but you're doing good. You, you know, doing? maybe I should get my glasses if we could yes. get the uh, entrance go, plan up around here. Ooh, Menace. Oh, nice. Nice. Menace. Menace, uh, despite being active in the local scene for nearly 20 years now, uh, still got a great amount of uh, agility and strength, and I mean he can jump out of the building still. I Good mean, escapability there by Eric. That was absolutely. It. He he missed the pinning opportunity. Probably wouldn't have got it, but you never know. See, Eric uh, is very accomplished. He's a NWA champion. Uh, he's all over the Southeast and Midwest. Uh, he's got tons of, of titles, as you can see him there looking on. Wiping his nose like a gentleman. But uh, he he won this belt in a battle royal, which, hey, you beat 11 other guys, I think it was. He did. He beat them all. Congratulations. But his menace is sitting there. They're having some jive talking back and forth here. Menace not intimidated uh, nor scared by Eric Andrews and his reputation. They're telling menace mom, has been there and done that, brother. They're telling mama jokes back and forth. But this is really the first, I would say, real test if he pins menace or makes menace tap out uh he will prove a lot and i would say eric winning that title was an upset i think a lot of people thought king shane uh, yeah saying i'd definitely say that king shane was probably the odds on favorite and these guys they're both quick you know don't let eric andrews uh, fool you he's still a pretty quick guy oh yeah uh he's fantastic but menace just a little bit quicker uh, Menace knows he's been there. Like I've said, he's he's a wily veteran. He's been there, done that, and he, you know Eric Andrews cheated to beat him. Uh, he also, well, well you I know, mean, he won. I mean, that's you know, it's pro wrestling. What a chop right there! My God, what a chop! I mean, if they let it go, they let it go. And we've had years, and decades of people cheating and getting away with it. So I mean, you know, what's and to we stop all understand people? that that's part of it and that's how it goes. But at the same time, in Menace's Here mind, go. he's got to think one too that he knows he can't get it off that one. He's just going right now trying to trying to put Andrews Ooh, on defense there. Now he's working and he's going to start working that arm and wearing him down. Yep. That'll, see the whole thing about this too. If you not only is this a submission type move, it, it wears down the arm. Getting out of this move takes a lot of energy. It does. You so, see him crawling, crawling to the rope. Now, wait a minute. And look That's... at Mason Dixon right there, grabbing his guy's hand, making sure he gets a hold of that rope. Ugh. You all right? I'm sure if he was sitting here, he'd have some cheesy little response for it. Talking well, about how he was just, it's, he didn't see anything. He didn't do anything. He just happened to be waving towards going... Eric, and Eric grabbed him. That's what he said. He was going to get there anyway. He was. Menace, there, Menace right? is a big boy. He'll, he'll, he'll be able to deal with that. I just want to point out the hypocrisy of Mason Dixon, but <laughs> look at the fan. That's a good tight shot there. The 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 pain on Eric. You can Andrews. see that Menace is like it's still early in the match here. Uh, these guys haven't been going out for more than you know five six minutes, and you know he's already in a lot of pain, and he's spent a lot of time here uh, with with Menace on the offensive, and part of that comes from putting Andrews on the defensive by going for some of those early pin attempts. You know, a lot of people think in defense. A lot of people miscategorize Menace. 
they'll sit there and go, this guy's a high flyer. Uh, some people call it pure wrestling. Some people call it, you know, luchador. But to be right. honest, I mean, this guy is one of the better mat wrestlers, and he's one of the best uh, catch-as-catch-can wrestlers in the business. And he has a lot of martial arts experience. There's not a lot of people with a whole lot of martial arts experience. You have me. I, you know, I want to state what, championship. What mar- hey, disco and funk are not martial arts. Hey, I, I don't know state, if you do that or not. I want to state like championship. Out here. Hey, I want to state championship in judo. I think, in fact, I got I got kicked out of judo because I was trying to break somebody's neck. You've got Spoonie Mac too. Spoonie's got a lot of uh, martial arts experience, and so does he Menace. does. Because Menace hails from the, the the land of the rising sun. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. Well, Andrew's turning Ooh. around into a sleeper here. That's something we haven't seen a lot of here in Great American s- Wrestling. I was going to say the same thing. You haven't seen a weaver lock in a long time. And he's, a weaver lock? Yeah, that's what they used to call that. Back in the dizzy day. Mm. Back Is that day. back when they still had eight tracks? You sure. I, there's still eight tracks at my place, brother. Come on I, up. I have no doubt. Long-legged women in eight tracks all night long. Mirrored oh. balls hanging from the ceiling. Here we go. This is a family program, Funky. We need to keep it that way. Disco. And boys. Menace with the uh, snapmare there and a big drop kick to Eric Andrews, sending him down to the mat. Yeah, he Menace let go of that the weaver. Ropes. Oh. He let go of that weaver lock, uh, or Menace got out of it, and it didn't look like it had too much effect. One, two, nothing doing. You're not going to pin Menace with something like that, although Andrews is going to get in the face of Flanagan and let him know what the deal is. He thinks it should have been three. Of course he does. Boom, there we go, right into the lower back there of Menace. And, you know, for someone that's a high flyer like Memphis, Memphis. I'm sorry, like Menace, like Menace, I get so excited, I get tongue-tied here. Is, is the other one Chattanooga? Oh, you? you're, yeah. It's Huntsville it. versus Memphis. Uh, for a high flyer like Menace, someone who uses, uh, and you know, the martial arts and uses a variety of moves, uh, you know, you never want to have that lower back damage, but especially when you're going to be taking some higher, higher risk offensive maneuvers into account well every time i've wrestled menace i went for his legs but you're right about the back is another good thing that you know it, it um menace may be superhuman but he's not immortal and uh you know he is a man uh seems like he's found the, the fountain of youth somewhere but uh Woo! Over, Big in, there. over in japan there must be the uh, fountain of youth you know everybody over there lives like a hundred man well, they, they eat a lot of sushi, which I wish uh, I ate more of. But I live in Pigeon Forge now, and I wouldn't eat sushi Boom, up there if you paid me. There. Yeah, I'd... Nice suplex. This mismatch is going back and forth pretty well, and I think Eric is uh, Eric has a good chance to win, actually, right now. Going yeah. for the cover. One, two. Nope. I kind of... I kind of uh, Maybe I'm disrespecting Eric Andrews a little bit. I would have put uh, Menace as a, as a favorite, but uh, I think they're both tough. Don't get me wrong. But you know, I Eric think, is... uh, you know, Eric Andrews came out and he lasted. Uh, he was probably the third man in on that Battle Royal, on the Great American Royale. and uh, he, he was in there a little bit longer than I was. Yeah, but he, but he went the distance, and uh, he, he he still managed to uh, win that match at the end as well. So he's a tough guy. Oh, yeah. I'm not, yeah, he's a great competitor. Like we said before, he NWA champion uh, right here. Uh, in the southeast midwest region and he's in there uh showing menace exactly why he's Ooh. oh maybe not maybe menace is showing him uh that there's a lot of different things going on here at great american wrestling oh what you're gonna have some great wrestlers like menace like eric andrews right here <laughs> that, on great american wrestling is that your sleeping bag out there in front of him what was that uh no mine actually has my little pony on it i'm a brony <laughs> that doesn't i know it goes me. well with your lisa frank inspired tights Hey man, those are custom made. The Black Panther. I heard you. I heard somebody said you said they look like a chicken, brother. That's the Black Panther. What is Shay? <laughs> what, what is Mason Dixon, Dixon doing down there in a three-point stance? It looks like he's about to tackle Eric Andrews. I know he likes football, but it's not. I don't uh, think. I don't think those knees can support the three-point stance. I don't think he's got too many plays from scrimmage left in them legs. We got Menace and Eric Andrews trading big forearms here on the outside. Our referee Flanagan letting it go. These guys have got to be dangerously close to a ten count. What a chop! Look at well, those nine inch chops. If, mm. See, I'm surprised. If if I was Eric and I was champ, I would have tackled Menace right there and held him on the ground for the uh, for, for the, the count out victory. The well, count, and that's well, why you're not champion because you do cheap stuff like that. Well, no, man. It would have been a double. It would have been a double count out draw. We both split the winner's purse, and guess what? I'm champ. I mean, it would have been you know. Hey, the fans might have been shortchanged, but and that's 
And that, but that's not the kind of guy Menace is. Menace isn't going to sit there and take something like that. You're definitely going to no, get a receipt afterwards if, from if, someone like Memphis. No, Goofball. If, no, Goofy. If Menace did that, he wouldn't have won the belt. I'm talking about Eric Andrews should have just tackled him. I know, but what I'm saying is Menace is not going to let someone like Eric Andrews do that because he has respect with a big clothesline there. He's got respect and another shoulder tackle. Respect for our fans, respect for this business, something that you lack. Something that Eric Andrews sometimes lacks, despite the fact that he's great at it. Ooh. Here he goes with a sunset flip. Oh. Menace rolls through and a big kick to the wow. head. Oh, my goodness. Here we go with cover one, two. That could be, oh, 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 I thought we had three. I love that Oof. little double, that little drop kick to the noggin there. That was nice. Give Andrews a lot of credit for kicking out of that. Well, Menace is confused. He thinks he got the three count, and he should be on him instead of... Uh, what you drinking there? Is that can I smell that? Is that is that a legal beverage at this hour? That is this is water. This is hydrogen and oxygen molecules. Uh, really? Two hydrogen, one oxygen. It's H two O. There's some there's some waves coming up out of the container, but I'll take your word for it. It looks like there's some fumes or something. But uh, no, come on now, Funk Master. This is <laughs> speaking of drunk. Looks like Eric Andrews has had a few. Oh, and here, he might have rope doped him there. Uh oh. Andrews, a savvy competitor, and look at Menace right off the... Oh, my God, what... Oh, that's, that's it, that's one. One, two, ah. that's... Oh, wow. He cleaned his clock with that kick, man. He cleaned his clock. I think if Flanagan had been in position for that right when he had him down, I think that might have been three. Here he goes now, Menace grabbing the wrist, just trying to stay in control of this match, stay on top of Andrews. As you see, he gave him a little space there. Andrews came up wobbly, kind of rope-a-doped him in. And uh, Menace has kind of learned his lesson from that real quickly, that he's going to stay on top of him and not let him. Uh, there you go with Andrews with the rope break. I'm kind of surprised he went for a hammerlock there. I thought he might have tried to do something because it's obvious that Eric Andrews is uh, feeling a little worse for wear, but he's working <clears> on that <throat> arm. That left arm is taking quite a beating. Yeah, he's really going after that arm. Oh, Maybe uh, I'd, I'd heard some scuttlebutt around the locker room that there might have been uh, some issues with uh, with Eric Andrews. Oh, my goodness. What what a maneuver. Well, no neck was in the way. I'm not sure what that was, but it looked cool. But he's still hurting. The, you know, his arm's sore. That there, so. There's been some talk that there might be some uh, lingering two count there. Uh, damage to uh, Eric Andrews' arm. Uh, that's just kind of what I heard. And, you know, if you want to find out more stuff like that, you can check me out on Twitter at Smart Mark Green, where I'm going to have all of the latest action and backstage goings on right here in Great American Wrestling. <laughs> you need to have a 900 number. Uh -oh. You know, if you know, nobody uses phones anymore. So uh, I'm going to do I'm going to do the Twitter machine. And here he goes. He's got him hooked for a. Your mom called me last night. Oh, here we go. Oh, I have a little class. So, Mahi Straw Cradle One Two. Oh, what a kick out! You know, Menace is very fond of that move. Mm, I like it too. Big spine buster. I'd say you would. I, I like watching it. I wouldn't want to take one. I'll tell you that. One, two. Ooh, close, close. Both these competitors just laying it all out on the line out here. An old commentator from around here used to always say shades of Arn Anderson. Yeah, taking him, <laughs> taking him to the shade tree. <laughs> the menace will be throwing shade here in a second, trying to slow this guy down now. It's, it's been a good throw, match so far. They, they, they've, they've been throwing some hands, throwing some forearms already. Well, they've 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 absorbed they've absorbed some big moves. What a backhand! Oh, oh wow, dude, that move they've been showing for three weeks on Great American. <laughs> they've and so Eric Andrews has been watching TV. He knows he knew exactly. He knows what exactly what Menace is doing, and Menace just unknowingly, you know. Basically knocked out a referee planning, and here he is, Eric Andrews, taking advantage. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. I guarantee you that's why Menace was going for that arm uh, to maybe thwart that maneuver of Definitely Eric gonna, there. Especially since coming down the left side, he's relying on that left arm. Well, champ, Mason you Dixon. You, if you're the champ, you can't sit there and use the... Uh, the referee as a shield and then expect... I think gonna... everybody knows good and well that if Menace had connected on that elbow, Eric Andrews probably wouldn't be champion right now. He would have caught him true. square in the face. It would have been knockout city, brother. <laughs> now it looks like he's waking up a referee Flanagan. <laughs> I love this. Flanagan doesn't know what world he's in. Look at this guy. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm a teenage girl, and I'm late for football practice. He doesn't even know what world he's in. I love Menace. it. I love it. 
Oh, Menace going for a backslide. This is what beat you in that last match. One, Don't remind me. two. Oh, oh, I think if Flanagan had had his wits about him. What's Yada. he going for here? Is this an... Oh, my goodness. Flying this, arm he's got him in an arm bar. He's going to break his... He's going to break his arm, Funky, if he, better, if he doesn't tap. How close is he to that rope? I can't see on the I, I can't either, but he's... You know, even if he quits, Flanagan might not hear him. And now he's grabbed his leg. That's unique. It's going to make it harder for, for Eric Andrews to use that other leg to help roll himself over towards those ropes now. Oh, he's going to tap. Look at his hand. Oh, I don't think... Is he, he's going to tap on the first title defense? What's going on here? Did Menace release that? Oh, now he's got maybe a stronger position. There. Oh, what's he? Is he going for a cross face here? What is this? He's going for something funky. Oh, that's funky, from the all pits right. Of, from the pits of hell. If Eric can... From the pits of funk city. Who is that? What is Cadillac doing out here? What's he doing in the ring? Ooh, hit him what's with the he... dang belt. What's Cadillac Cowboy knows good and well he's not supposed to be out here. He was suspended earlier. What's he doing? Cadillac Cowboy's got no dog in this fight. He's out here kicking minutes right in the head. I bet... Ugh. Why is Cadillac first, the what? first title match, the first title defense of Great American Wrestling? This is how it has to yeah, be. Yeah, with it's... some jerk out here like the Cadillac Cowboy just putting the boots Ooh, right to Here's him. Antonio Garza with a chair. Now what's he doing up? Everybody, see, everybody wants this belt. Everybody's trying to get their name in here. See, this is smart. I have no idea why Cadillac doesn't like this old lady. Just hit Cadillac. She better He's watch out. Her. She doesn't want to be doing that. He'll spit some tobacco juice in her eyeball. Menace wins here by disqualification. We just got word. Antonio Garza comes out. Everybody thinks he's a good guy. He wants his name thrown in the mix. I was here to help you, my friend. Uh, Funky, thanks for joining me, and thank all of you for joining us here on Great American Wrestling this week. I'm Mark Green for Funkmaster V. We'll catch you next time.